One morning, Douglas was taking a goods train along the Little Western. Up ahead, he spotted Duck and his coaches on a siding. The passengers milled about beside the line, grumbling and fussing. Douglas was intrigued. Ugh, what are you doing, Duck? Oh, nothing for you to worry about. <laughs> you best b be off with- no! Duck was interrupted by a commotion from within the coaches. After a great deal of shouting and banging, his driver, fireman, and guard emerged from Alice, disheveled and displeased. Those blasted squirrels! We'll never catch them! Douglas was in hysterics. He chortled away, leaving Doug quite embarrassed. That night, Douglas was still laughing as he backed into the shed. <laughs> Didn't I bring a wee pet back with you, duck? <laughs> It wasn't my fault, Douglas. That new cleaner didn't close the coach door last night. <sighs> the poor things probably needed shelter from the cold. I just only wish they had the courtesy to leave before my passengers got on. A duck and his squirrels, Oliver and the parrot, and Donnie's quackeroo. Okay, are we a branch line or a zoo? No pets for me, thank you. I wouldn't be too sure, Douglas. You often share Toad with me on some occasions. Wouldn't he count as a pet to you? Hmm? That's different. Toad is a brake van, and his place is on the railway, not as an animal that lives in a swamp. Take me advice, Duck. Leave young coaches for a wee while. No one expected passengers with the goods. <laughs> Duck, exhausted from the day's ordeal, decided not to retort and went to sleep instead. Over the next few days, Douglas was insufferable. He joked constantly about furry creatures and little pets. You never see me delayed by that nonsense! But one wet and dreary morning, he was delayed. Poor Oliver failed on the points outside the shed, trapping Douglas inside. By the time Donald moved Oliver away, Douglas was very late to fetch his trucks from the harbor. All right, your lot. No tricks today. Above the usual grumble of the trucks, Douglas thought he heard something. It sounded like tiny voices. His driver began to check along the train. Leave it. We're late enough as it is. The driver reluctantly jumped back into the cab and Douglas bustled away. Soon he was steaming along the line, determined to make up for lost time. Due to its proximity close to the sea, Duck's branch line usually felt the worst of any bad weather. There was a small bump in the line where some of the ballast had shifted from the rain. It was due to be put right, but the engines knew to take caution until it was fixed. Douglas, however, was in such a hurry that he forgot all about it. He charged over it, and the whole train felt the effect. The trucks groaned, but again, Douglas swore he heard more voices. Before he could think of anything else, a persistent knocking sound filled the air. The driver looked back. Bother! 
One of the van doors is open. That bomb probably rattled the latch loose. Douglas was cross. He knew the trouble had to be put right, but now he'd be even more later. The driver met with the guard at the van with the open door. They inspected it, but found no damage beyond the loose latch. We'd best check the goods inside. The way Douglas was banging about, they're likely all over the place. They stepped into the van and... What do you think you're doing? Huddled in the van were three young boys, looking rather frightened. Uh, uh going for a... I'll go phone the police. Douglas had to stay where he was until the authorities arrived. Because of that, the other engines were held up with their trains. Soon enough, the police arrived. The fat controller was with them. He spoke sternly to the three kids. Now listen closely, you little rascals. My railway is not a playground. Your trespassing could have left you seriously injured. I do not want to see you three around my railway unsupervised again. Is that clear? Y yes, sir. Sorry, sir. And Douglas, you are not to blame for this, uh, situation but I would advise you to be more extra careful and not rush about next time. Otherwise, it could be far more serious. I'm sorry, sir. Soon enough, services resumed and the engines worked hard to make up for lost time. Douglas didn't see the other engines all day. They were far too busy to bother with him he hoped for some peace and quiet in the shed, but I'm sorry to say, he wouldn't get it. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you one thing, guys, for I'd rather be a pet owner than a babysitter myself. Ugh, so much for no unexpected passengers on your trucks, Dougie. What are we, a branch line? Or a daycare! <laughs> <laughs> Douglas blushed with embarrassment. Oh, never mind them, Douglas. <laughs> They're only kidding, after all. <laughs> the shed erupted with howls of laughter. It was a great joke to the others, but Douglas thought they were being very silly indeed. <laughs>